this might be a take that that people might take some offense to, but is it entirely possible that we've seen every dunk that everybody can do and there just isn't anything left? Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today on this Wind Up Wednesday edition, academic and athletic consultant for the CKSA Project, George Aka. George, how are you today, sir? I'm all good. Glad, glad to be here. Robert, you see my title changes every week. You see that, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stick with this one, brother. And... Also with us is our favorite administrator, Robert Abney. Robert, what's going on, my friend? As yeah. always, sir, we are living the dream over here once we get unmuted. So well, today's episode, we're at the halfway point of the NBA season. So segment one, we're going to do our rankings at that halfway point, talk a little bit about the All-Star Game festivities. Uh, segment two and three, Adam Silver did his State of the NBA, and we're going to react to a lot of his comments. So that ought to be fun, especially segment three, when we talk about player development. But first, at the midway point, OCP top 10, Boston's one, Minnesota two, Cleveland three, OKC four, Clippers are five, Denver six, Milwaukee seven, and dropping. Phoenix is eight and rising. New Orleans is nine. Zion is still healthy. And the New York Knicks are still teasing their fans. They are 10th. We'll jump to the East. Top six in the East, fellas. Boston, Cleveland, Bucks, Knicks, Sixers, and Pacers. Seven through 11 because we have an addition to Bum City. The Heat, George told you about that. They're right there. <laughs> Magic, Bulls, Hawks, and Nets. And then the newest addition to Bum City, the Raptors, Hornets, Wizards, and Pistons. George, what are your thoughts on the East at the midway point of the season? They're shaping up to where they've been. I mean, it's you haven't had too much. You haven't had there hasn't been so much movement. See, I, I look at the East in a funny way because it's really like Boston and whoever else is along for the ride. Um, because I, I don't somebody's got to prove to me who I haven't seen yet that somebody can beat the uh, Celtics in a in a seven game series. So, um, you know, Cleveland was hot. I still got some faith with Indiana. They look like they're coming along. Those young boys are doing it. Look like they're doing their thing. But, um, you know, and I, and I, I know, uh, the, the other panelists on usually on here, I can't believe in them was New York Knicks yet. Cause <laughs> yeah, I had Julius Randall factor hurt. And he, it, cause you notice they've been real hot that he's been out. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave it right there. That's where I'm gonna leave it right there. Okay. Robert, the East at the midway point. Any thoughts, sir? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how far the Bucks drop. Um, <laughs> I, 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 there have not on this on this podcast, there have not been a lot of Doc Rivers buyers. And I, 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 I don't think anybody's buying it because just maybe maybe they'll over the break. He'll have an opportunity, maybe figure a few things out. Have some practices. Hey, Robert, let me try this. I'm going to try. We're going to have some practices, have some opportunities just to be together for a little bit longer. And then when we come back in the second half, it won't yeah. be so jumbled. Did I sell you? Introduce some stuff, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'm not buying it, man. I, I, don't <laughs> I tried. I tried. Okay. <laughs> in the West, top six, Minnesota. Made it to the all-star break is number one, OKC's two, Clippers three, Nuggets four, Suns five, New Orleans is six, and then seven through 12, and two teams won't make it. Dallas, the Kings, Lakers, Warriors, Utah, and Rockets, and in the West, Bum City, Memphis, Portland, and the Spurs. They're really not that good, but I like Wimby. George, what are your thoughts in the West at the midway point? Um, it's still that youth movement out there outside of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Clippers I see, but, uh, Golden State and the Lakers are holding on, even though the Lakers didn't have make that, didn't make any moves at the break. I'm, I'm sorry. They did let Dinwiddie get, they signed him off the rubbish heap after the, the hurt heap. Um, uh, but I, those, those teams are going to be tough. I mean, the Sacramento's, the Minnesota's, uh, 
the uh the Pelicans, this is going to be a tough series. I'm actually, if you're talking about playoffs, I'm looking forward to those playoffs because I think all those teams match up real nice with each other. It's going to be, you know, the youth movement against some of these older teams. So I'm I'm really, look, the West I'm looking forward to see happening during the playoffs. All right, going to have to stay up late. Robert, mm-hmm. any thoughts on the West at the All-Star break? Uh, well, if these standings hold and you're Minnesota or you're OKC and you earned the top seed, you really want to see the Nuggets at number four? Because they're just they're just hanging out, just hanging out. And it I that I don't want to see them until I absolutely have to. I don't want to see the Nuggets till the finals. And and if the Nuggets are sitting four or five. That that's not going to be good for whoever earns that top seed. Yeah, and uh, for for me, I'm I'm watching Clay Thompson. That's the Warriors are holding on, and they're trying to figure out what to do with an aging player, and it's happening right in front of our eyes. And that's 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 the one thing that's gonna gonna pause me on the West East. I agree with George. Is Boston, I think they have already done enough to uh, kind of roll this thing, so everybody's playing for two. All right, story of the week, NBA All-Star Game weekend. So in segment one, we'll talk about the on-the-court stuff, and then in segment two and segment three, we'll talk about off-the-court. You had the highlights. You got the celebrity game, fellas. You got the rising stars, the HBCU classic, skills challenge, three-point contest, Steph, Sabrina, Dunk contest, G League, and today we'll have uh, the actual All Star game, but that's probably the least important thing. George, did anything catch your eye on All Star Weekend? Um, it had. I I uh, I enjoyed the Rising Stars game because the G League kids played great. Um, I think they ran out of gas there at the end, so that was good. Um, the dunk contest. Uh, I thought they were trying to keep uh, Brown in it because McClung was like still in the show. And, and you know, I really, I, and it's funny because I watched McClung during the Rising Stars game and the kids got some game. I mean, he, he can really play. So I, I, I'd love to see him get on a team on a roster for a little extended period of time to see exactly how, how he'd fare uh, against him because he was, he was going in the Rising Stars game. And then, you know, to me, the highlight was Steph and Sabrina. I mean, it it eclipsed the three-point contest because both of them would have won the three-point contest. <laughs> and it just proved the fact that Steph Curry's the best shooter that's ever played in the game. So it is, you know, that was the highlight to me. That, I, I wanted to see them go at it because I knew it was going to be a whole lot, whole lot falling right there. So, All right. Robert, what about <clears throat> you? What caught your eye? I know we were in the text chain for a little bit. What do you think? So, so you know, the, the difference between shot takers and shot makers, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Steph and Sabrina, shot makers. Yes. yes. Three-point contest, <clears throat> shot takers. takers. There's a big difference, right? <laughs> we don't need shot takers. We need shot makers. Uh-huh. Um, the second thing, and and this this might be a take that, that – People might take some offense to, but is it entirely possible that we've seen every dunk that everybody can do and there just isn't anything left? Is that possible? George, I'll let you take that first, sir. The third third thing, I got one more thing. The third (laughs) thing, that that floor, and I I see why the NBA did it. I see the revenue potential for a floor like that. I cannot watch. Can't watch because you can't watch what's actually happening because the floor is yelling at you. And <laughs> I, I, and yes, I'm old. Yes, get off my lawn. I can't watch it. <laughs> Uh, George about the dunk contest because uh, uh, in our private chats, fans, we've been talking about the uh, dunk contest for years. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
it, it it just makes the NBA look stiff and old because there are other dunks out there. If you ever watch YouTube and stuff like that, you've seen some incredible stuff. And I think McClung started doing a little little bit of it with that th- toss up back to himself situation. But of course, old school judges done went ahead and, and, and like <laughs> killed them for it. Um, so I think, but the thing what happens is a whole lot of more a, a whole lot more of the creative dunkers. And guys that who would take a chance don't even don't don't even do the dunk contest. And I mean, you look at none of our best dunkers weren't even in there. Probably our more creative one. So it starts to get boring. But again, we'll go about five between five or ten years where it'll be lackluster, and then we'll have then we'll have some creative kids come out and we'll have a return with events and them going at it because the same thing happened. We hadn't had a good dunk t- contest since. Uh, Gordon and uh and um which call it when Levine went at it because they got creative with their stuff. So, you know, and Robert, I'm with you. I think that floor situation, it was good for that, for that all-star weekend. Once the game hits, once they do the all-star game and any other regular game, there's no way you could do that, man. I mean, in bet- it, maybe at the timeout, but that you can't have all that going on during the during the whole uh game. It was a lot. It was a lot. All right. So, fellas, with me, what was the skills challenge? That that was bad. It showed no skill. <laughs> they had to tell people where to go. It's like they never practiced it. And I'm also with you guys. Steph and Sabrina, uh, I'm watching this with point five. They're making shots. And uh, selfishly, George, I'm glad the center won. <laughs> the three-point contest because you know my coach never let me shoot him so, so congratulations could, to Ken. you couldn't shoot whatever so man. <laughs> the politics in the system held me back <laughs> but with that in segment two adam silver covered a wide range of topics we want to cover them and get our panel's reaction we'll be right back on the our coaches podcast Why should student athletes use the CKA SAVE Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. Adam Silver, commissioner of the NBA, did a wide-ranging uh, interview talking about the state of the NBA, and we're going to cover some of the topics uh, for the rest of the show, but we're going to start off with thoughts on the Super Max deal. So as of this season, and we've joked on this show about the 65-game club, you need to play at least 65 games to be eligible for major honors such as MVP, and all NBA and the new rule has caused a lot of issues in part because it impacts the players money and most notably the super max extension players must have won the MVP in any of the previous three seasons or have made all NBA first, second or third team and, or one defensive player of the year in the most recent season, two or three to be eligible for a super max extension contract Robert what are your thoughts on Adam Silver saying hey I don't know if we should make any changes to this but we'll keep an eye on it when guys will lose money this year well that's that's just it I mean guys are going to lose money and when you start doing that then you start getting into collective bargaining issues so 
at this point, there's not anything they can do about it because it's already been bargained. But you can bet they will be revisiting the idea of the Supermax and what that should look like. George, they messing with their money. Um, but again, Adam Silver said he is not sure it is time to make any changes. What do you think about that? It's um, it's Adam Silver and the NBA starting to just take control back over. I think a lot of the control on what was going on it was dipped towards the player side. Um, I see it as them just it's like they're putting in a set of rules to try to take things, try to take control back over. And with with on this level, how do you control? How you get any control over who goes left, right, and center is money. So, like we said, first thing I hit them in the pockets first, and we'll go because you know. At the, it, it's going to become at that collective bargain agreement. It'll become a fight with this whole situation because we're, we already see that that sixty five game rule is going to have a major impact on MVP, um, all all NBA, all defensive teams, um, and you know then we get back and then so you got players that are going to be upset because they they're worried about their rest and all the other stuff. Even though I know there's some questions with that load management situation, but, but we can we can get into that at a whole nother time. But yeah, they got some real issues to break down right there because it NBA always felt like at times it even feels like to me that the players have more have more uh have more pull here than the owners do. I think it's the owners taking some of that pull back. So it's gonna be a, it, it's gonna make the collective bargaining an interesting situation. Yeah, and and we've all talked about how weak the NBA union actually is. It's not baseball, folks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Adam Silver also talked about the overall state of the game. The NBA scoring boom has continued this season. Guys are busting 70 and and having their little Will, you know, uh, stencils there. Uh, The Boston Celtics are on pace to record the highest offensive rating ever. Uh, But despite the league trending more towards offense, Adam Silver actually said he's pleased with the state of the game and noted that the league's main objective is to create a competitive environment. And you can see that in the East and the West. It's very competitive. He did, however, admit that the league will continue discussing the matter internally and with players and coaches to determine if any rule changes regarding defense will come into play. Robert. What are your thoughts on Adam Silver's thoughts on the overall state of the game? Well, I I mean, I think we've we've talked in the past about how the game has really evolved over the years. I mean, it's it's it it is a three-point shooting league right now. That's what it is. And you the the vast majority of scoring comes from putbacks and dunks. Three point shots. There is no mid range game anymore. There would be no home for Bernard King or Mark Aguirre, right? There, uh-huh. there just wouldn't be a place for them. Um, and and that's not to say they couldn't evolve their games as well, but that's that's where the game is right now. Um, and that's okay. I I don't have a problem with that, but I'm I am interested to see. Um, if there is anything that they can do as far as a defensive rule change to kind of swing the pendulum back a little bit, I, I don't know what they would do. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Okay. George, what are you thinking, sir? I mean, you know, Robert's right. The game, it, we it's evolved. I mean, when you, once you brought Steph, once, once Steph hit there with his, with, with his way of playing, it kind of in the Splash Brothers as a whole, it changed what was going on. My thing is, I you know, I think it's it's getting it's getting like the NFL where it's hard to play cornerback, um, you know, because you you can't do. So I hope they look at. I'd love to see what rule changes would be discussed, because as much as you uh, you know. I'm gonna say I, I miss my '90s basketball. <laughs> I, I miss my I miss my grind at it when you nobody scoring to, seventy against yeah. Riley's uh, when, Heat team. That's right. When you had to earn, when you actually had to earn buckets. Now it's like you know, it, it, 
<laughs> when you got certain people scoring, there, there's some people like let, let just to go because I mentioned Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie's now going to average twenty in in that in that league. Dinwiddie will average twenty right now. So you know you had to have actual shot makers, and it just it, it goes back like I, I sit there and wonder, and that debate always comes up like. What would Jordan average in this league? I mean, it'd be like 50. Who, what are you going to do with him? So I, I hope they do do some. Uh, I'm interested to see what the defense is about. I hope they 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 do take a look at it. Um, I'm not opposed to the scoring, and I'm not opposed to the parity. But with every league, if you go back and look, when you got a dominant team or like two of them, the rating, they get a ratings boom, and, and the league seems so much better, even though people hate talking about it when it's not their team because, well, here, we've never had that dominant team. But, you know, <laughs> you know, that I, I, I yeah, I want to see what, they, what they're talking about with the defensive changes. All right, and finally in this segment, player ref communication. Fans of this show know that Robert Abney is a, a, a high school and college official. And here's what Adam Silver said about player ref communication. With each passing year, the relationship seems to grow more strained. And already this season, there's been numerous fines to coaches and players for publicly criticizing the ref. Uh, you, you, you remember Mike Brown's laptop rant. Anthony Edwards actually said they were cheating. Come on, man. So Adam Silver says, quote, there's a real willingness on behalf of officials uh, as well to do better. And he stressed that both parties need to communicate better. Robert, you are the authority. You have the floor. Any thoughts about Adam Silver saying that there needs to be better communication with the refs and the players? I, I agree with that. First of all, um, and let's let's start with this. The NBA officials are the best basketball officials in the world. They are. And they are tasked with ensuring that the game is run in a fair manner so that both teams have the opportunity to perform to their ability, right? You also have a situation where the, the rules in the NBA are so different than college rules, high school rules. You know, they're, they're not the same. They're not the same. And people complain that, you know, LeBron and guys like that are officiated differently. And yes, they are, because it's also the NBA is also in the entertainment business. You know, with, and with all of that said, and I tell people this all the time in games I officiate, I will talk to you all night. If you have questions, I will answer your questions all night. You might not like the answers, but I will answer your questions. And when people come to me and they are angry or frustrated, a lot of times I have to say, hey, I'm right here. I'll talk to you. You don't have to be disrespectful. And to me, that's what a lot of the, that's what a lot of that is. I understand, you know, Chris Paul and guys like that, you know, they make a lot of money. They put a lot of time and effort into doing what they do. But when you just flat out when you flat out come out and say, you know, use profanity directed at an official, what are they supposed to do? I mean, what am I supposed to do? If you come out and tell me that my parents are never married or anything like that, what am I supposed to do? Well, you have this and you have that. That's pretty much the tools that you have, right? And we should never have to get there but sometimes we do because we're human and we have emotions and people get frustrated. And does communication need to be better? Absolutely. Do people need to be more respectful? Absolutely. Because at the end, 
it, at the end of the day, nobody, sorry, nobody's cheating. The refs do not care who wins. I do not, when I show up at a game, I do not care who wins. It makes no difference to me. And it's not any different in the NBA. So that was a whole, that was a, a whole lot to say. Do they need to communicate better? Yes. But players <laughs> need to remember, you know, you got to be respectful and decent and not question people's heritage and such things, right? <laughs> George, you're a longtime athletic director. What are your thoughts on it? You have been in many a heated game and, and had to protect many an official <laughs> going back to the locker room. What are your thoughts, sir, on Adam Silver's uh, declaration about better player, coach, and official communication? I, I'm gonna give you. I'll give you a story when I'm done, because it, it, and Robert will appreciate this because he'll laugh about it. Um, you know, I don't. It, it is communication's a big deal with them. I mean, it, yeah. As long I always felt, and I still feel to this day, as long as you don't have a, a, a official, and this is in any sport. That's coming into the game, uh, trying to prove a point, or with some kind of issue with some former player or a player at that point in time or a coach, we're fine, you know. And it doesn't, and it doesn't seem, you know, it doesn't, and, and it isn't blatant that you blatantly can't see. I mean, when we go through a half where they've gotten forty free throw shots and we've got zero or something along those lines, I'm fine. Um, but when it becomes a situation where it looks like there's a personal vendetta or something out there, then you know, then I have a, then I have issue. And you're right, I'm not going to agree with every foul you call or every non-foul you call, and it, it, that's the way the game is, you know. And I and I the other piece is I don't believe in I, I want officials to do their job. I don't want them to be in a situation where they are seen or deemed as dictating a game or whatever and that you know, I don't know that's a real that's a bigger thing with football um but as long as they do their job and they're fair both ways we used to say in baseball all the time I used to look back and if I got a bad strike called on me or I felt it was a bad strike I turned to, I turned to the umpire and be like make sure you go both ways and if he's gonna call bad both ways we're fine but if you're gonna call it one way on me and not on the other then that's the only time I got a problem so yeah, they they communication wise they have because those mic'd up times you've seen you've heard things said that you know that, uh, they need to have their mothers in the front row so they can have a conversation <laughs> with them a lot of times. So yeah, yeah as, as a as a former coach uh, who when I was a coach I did go every year to the officials meetings I asked a lot of questions I knew of the line that you cannot cross but you can dance and get close to it. And uh, when Adam Silver says there's a player and communication issue, he is correct. Uh, most of the time, people complain just to complain. Most of the time I have seen in my career, most people do not know the rules, including the players and the coaches. Yeah. So a lot of times as an AD, as a coach, as whatever, especially your assistants, your assistants can be very helpful with this or very mm -hmm. hurtful. Many a times with Tom Dickman, who is a Hall of Famer, it's let that one go. Uh -huh. Or dig into that one a little bit. Or as George mentioned, I had good perimeter players. I had good post players. If I had good perimeter players, I cared about perimeter calls. And you could beat up anybody you want in the post because I can't do nothing anyway. Or if I'm having a very dominant post player, eh, let the guards go. Don't touch my big man. in the uh -huh. So... These are all things that, and again, conversation over confrontation. So I'm curious to see what they will do. I'm curious to see how much they will, um, you know, take take these things seriously, and uh, we'll follow that. But when we get back in segment three, Adam Silver talked about the G League Ignite and the overall player development, and I wanted to give that a segment. We'll talk about that when we return on the iCoaches podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. 
Former George Mason standout Fallon Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast. And in segment three, Adam Silver gave some lengthy comments on the league reassessing the G League Ignite, as well as his candid thoughts on player development. I'd like to share some information with my panel and then get their response to it. So let's give you some background, folks. In 2020, the NBA founded the G League Ignite, which is a developmental program that competes in the G League. To this point, 10 players have been drafted, including uh, Jalen Green and Scoot Henderson, who were top three picks. This season, though, the G League Ignite's not doing very well. They're 2-19, and and a number of players have seen their stock drop. When the NBA started the Ignite, it was because college didn't allow the ability to profit off their name, image, and likeness. And now what you're seeing is colleges being able to profit, players being able to profit off their name, image, and likeness. So maybe we don't need the G League Ignite. I don't know. In addition, he talked about player development, and I want to give this, and I quote, If you're seeing it now, what we're seeing in terms of close to 30% of the league have players who are born outside of the United States. It's clear the development is very different in many of those programs outside of the United States with more of a focus on practice and less of a focus on games, which seems to be the opposite of many youth programs in the United States. So with that, George, we will start the discussion with you. Any thoughts on either the G League Ignite or player development with such a large number of non-American players, we'll say it that way, in the league? The floor is yours, sir. All right. So first things first, I don't believe that the Ignite's going to go anywhere quite yet. Um it they, they've they can make they, as long as they can make some money off of it as long as it's somewhat profitable it'll be in place. The thing that happened was that you had other people with the same idea as the NBA come along. So you had overtime and all of this happened, and so kids have other avenues to go to. Um, you can look at it. We're still the better. They're the best players in the country. Tend to you get. A, a number of them that leave and a number of them leave and will be at the overtime or G league or something like that, or even going overseas. Cause you had a number of kids that were going overseas and like playing in Australia before and they come back because they did not want to be hampered by the money situation. Yeah. Um, until the revenue, I, I think it works out well for the kids that they can now get paid for their name and likeness, but I'm, I'm, I'm still going on. I'll probably, I don't know, but I'll see that the until the revenue for basketball can kind of get to somewhere close to where football is, it's probably going to be the status quo right now. As for development, yeah, I, I, the development overseas is better because it a those kids are hungrier, b they treat it like their soccer because see, European model is built off of soccer. You go to academy because these kids wind up at a young age if they're good day and wind up in an academy where they're working constantly going through all this. They might they might run a couple games a week, but a lot of times they uh, sleep, drink and eat basketball the entire time. 
They're getting one a whole lot of one-on-one personalized instruction. They're going through this whole thing, and it's a regiment, just like the soccer academies do. And they play at certain levels. And then when they get to get up to with the with the with the top level, you know, it's time now we gotta look at the NBA. And even those kids are coming over and might do a year proving themselves in certain spots like overtime or in college and then coming into the um and coming into the NBA. So that model that Europe that Europe has is fund for fundamentals is gonna be a better model because they get more time doing those things. But as for the future of the as for the future of the G League and stuff like it, it it's 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 kind of up in the air because it's like they're out there. You got a lot of kids that are, you got a number of kids that want to get paid, don't want to go, aren't really good at school, and would rather put, put their attention to actually playing the sport they love. Hell yeah, they're gonna go to they go they'll help if they got the opportunity. They're gonna go to overtime or G League or something like that. So we'll see. But until we change how we prepare these kids um like the europeans do we're going to have the same result you're going to see more of them this this also is a this is also a fault a monster that the nba built they wanted the globalization of the game they got it and this was a, this is the response you're gonna have more people playing so so robert what do you think g league ignite is that a passe idea and also, Adam Silver's thoughts on player development. You're in gyms more than we are. What do you think? Well, I I don't think I don't think the Ignite are going to go anywhere. I I think that there there's always going to be a spot because there are kids who don't, and, and we don't know what NCAA. We don't know what's going to come of all that, but the way the system is currently constituted, you have, you have kids who don't even want to pretend to go to school and there's nothing wrong with that. And if they want to go and they can play at that level, let them go. So I don't think the ignites going away. Um, Player development. I, I agree with a lot of what George said. I mean, it's a different system. Um, because let's be honest, the AAU stuff that we currently do, that is not player development. We're not developing anybody. Okay. You teach kids to uh, run a two, three zone or a one, three, one half court trap. And that's all you teach them how to do. You're not teaching them how to play, you know, and all these AAU teams, I mean, nobody runs stuff. You know, it's all five out and, you know, dribble drive and kick it out to the corner and air ball a three. I mean, there's a ton of that. Um, every once in a while, very, very rarely, you will find one of these AAU teams that will actually run sets that actually has a post kid that they have taught to do things, who has a go-to move who has a counter to his go-to move and has a, you know, kind of unicorn move, something that he throws in there once in a while, just to, just to mess you up. But those, those teams are really few and far between. Um, unless and until that AAU system changes, you know, we're really not going to see wholesale player development changes in the U S because that's, that's what it's going to be. And um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's fine. It's fine. The AU people, they have recognized a market and they have taken advantage of it. Good on them. But you're going to see, I think more and more Europeans, more Africans, more Australia, you're going to see more people from outside the U S continue to come into the NBA and maybe even make that balance excuse me maybe even make that balance instead of 30 percent 40 percent maybe even 50 percent who knows until that development system in the united states changes yeah Uh, go ahead george i will and and robert and robert's right and i look at it because our system and there's no better one than the uh than the nba and our developmental system and stuff to look at when you're talking about full-blown uh, almost capitalist values because they do, we do everything here on money. I mean, by money wise or better situation, kids are leaving teams 
I mean, it's even considered high school. They go from one high school to another. They go from one AAU team to another AAU team. These kids in Europe get an academy and it's streamlined all the way through where they can probably count on the same eight set of coaches the all, all the way through um, to where our kids could go through and they could have like nine different mm-hmm. not, they could have like a hundred different coaches depending on what they do with them because you can go from what like the uh, the DC Heat to uh, the, the the Blue Devils to this right here in this area because we got some of the best programs here but these kids jump ship right and left I mean we had we have kids that leave and go from I played two years at Paul the Six. In the next two years, I'm at Oak Hill Academy, and in my last one, I might be at Mount Vern. So they can they have this op- opportunity to go to these different places, depending on what situation looks best for them. And so, because of that, your development is going to suffer. And that's why here the personal training and personal uh, um, skills level uh, uh, um, stuff has become so huge. But even that's microwavable. So you know we. Yeah, we're we're gonna have incomplete players because we got an incomplete system. Yeah. Well, for me, one, I'm not mad at any AAU team or anything like that. There are some good programs and some bad programs. As Robert can tell you from the educational standpoint, there's some good schools, bad schools, whatever. It's the individual. Uh for me, less is more. Skill development has been de-emphasized. You can watch any game and see something as simple as guys and girls shooting on the right side with their wrong hand and just not being able to function on their opposite hand side. That's that's something simple. Um, Gameplay is emphasized. Uh, my son, 0.5, plays low AAU, and, and some of their teams play 50, 60, 70 games in a summertime, and the NBA only plays 82 in college, only plays 30, 35. So less is always going to be more. Uh, there there needs to be an increased embracing of boring because boring is hard, but it's hard, and then it becomes easy. And what I mean by that is Kobe once said one of the reasons why he was good is because he never lost sight of the fundamentals. There ain't but 12 to 15 ways to finish a basketball play Yet, if you look at at all of the trainers and and the cone drills and and, and everything going on, um, the best player in the world, fellas, right now is a big, fat, tall European guy that wears you out doing next to nothing, and it's awesome to watch. <laughs> okay, it's just awesome to watch a guy utilize his leverage and angles and and spacing and and things like that. So, uh, I'm glad uh, Adam Silver brought it up. It will be a topic we will continue to talk about over and over and over again. I'm looking forward to going to the Final Four and having surveys done with coaches and and having conversations about this and then reporting out on that. So I appreciate the time and the energy you guys have given to that topic as well. So as we wrap up, again, Selection Sunday is four weeks away. We're looking forward to it. So um, NCAA stuff. We'll talk about tomorrow. NBA is at its midpoint. So on behalf of our Cavalcade of Stars, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Eye Coaches podcast. And we'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The Eye Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at cka.saveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. 
Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.